Well, our sufficiency is of who? Ye are complete in Him and all those other beautiful truths. You have the enablements and therefore it says He made us able ministers of a new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For that legalistic letter type of trip does nothing but what? But the Spirit gives life. Praise the Lord. You know, I went through that period of legalism, so I know a little about it, see? Why, if you looked at a person the wrong way, you'd spend all night praying to try to get over that sin or something. Right. Huh. Boy, oh boy. If the commandments could have done it, we wouldn't have needed the Lord Jesus Christ. If the law could have accomplished it, then Christ lived and died in vain. But what the law could not do, God sending forth His only begotten Son, born of a woman, did it. And our ministry is not a ministry of the letter, it's a ministry of the Spirit. Oh, and what a day that, that, that is when you see it, you know. Somebody says, well, you can't eat onions. Somebody else says you can't eat garlic. Somebody else says, well, you can't wear brown shoes and be a Christian. Somebody else says you can't wear earrings. Somebody else says you can't mess up your hair, be a Christian. Well, anytime somebody says it, you just do it. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you eat garlic and uh, onion, but... Rufus used to say it's good for you physically, but degrades you socially. So uh, I don't want you to be degraded. Uh, but that's right. If anybody would say to me, look, you can't do that, that would almost make me lose all the dandruff I don't have. Then I, I would want to do it just to prove I'm still a Christian. Somebody told me once, you know, the Spirit of God leave me if I went into pagan temples. So I quit going to church and went to the Hindu temples. <laughs> and lo and behold, I found out when I walked into that Kali temple, man, I could speak in tongues like a house of fire. God was still there. Yeah, I rang a bell to wake their God up. But that old boy, I don't know what happened to him. He didn't interfere with my ability. Right. I woke him up when I went in. He didn't bother me any. I, I rang it when I went out to tell him I left. So he could go back to his hacienda and period of <coughs> horizontal. And while all the time we were in there, I was speaking in tongues. People said, you lose the spirit if I do this. Well, I tried it at Adolph's and it works there. <laughs> That's right. You see, when people say to you, this you can't do. I could take you into the epistles, you know. They had this little problem. Uh, you know, uh, one group said, uh, you can't eat this stuff that's been offered to idols or something. Remember that little trip? Yeah. Somebody else said, uh, you got to observe this new moon. Somebody else said, you got to keep this special Sabbath. And the Word of God said, no trip. For we are complete in Him. You've got to start walking with that completeness. Not the letter of the law, but the Spirit of it. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The tenderness, the peace, the love that's there. The forgiveness, the understanding. Uh, boy. Verses 7 through 16 are, are a parenthesis figure of speech grammatically, but I want to go to 17. Now the Lord, not given us the letter, kill, letter kill, but the Spirit giveth life. Now the Lord, I'm in verse 17, is that Spirit. See? That Spirit. And where the Spirit, that is to say of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Liberty. Liberty is renewed mind freedom according to the integrity of God's Word. There is freedom. 
And a man is never free. A man is never at liberty until he's at home with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one who sets men and women free. He's the one who turns you on. He is the one who makes you knowledgeable of the greatness of that love and of that freedom. Verse 18 says, But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord, not by the letter of the law. Man, if you go by the letter of the law, you get harder and harder and harder and more critical of people and of situations day after day. But if you go by the Spirit of the Lord, you're changed into the image. And then you move from glory to what? That's what I call the glory walk. This is the reason why. It's a glory walk, and we're changed into that image. People, what you look at is what you become. If you look at the negatives, you become negative. If you're with people that are always negative, I can guarantee you what you are. You're negative too. Right. You live with people long enough with the measles, you get them, usually. I guess. If I know the spiritual side, if you're with people that are always condemning before you know it, you start being critical of others. You're always in in what you're giving out. And what you're giving out is what you're really in. And if you take a look at the Lord Jesus Christ as it's revealed in his word, what he did for us and what he became in us, when you look at that or those two great realities, you become what you look at. You move from glory to glory. And then a lot of these things that most people are obstructed by just fall by the wayside. And life begins to have an effervescence and a glow to it. It's more than just an earthly existence where you put up with everything just because you want to try to live another day of confusion. It becomes a time of thanksgiving, a time of joy, a time of blessing because we are changed into the thing we look at and we look at the Lord Jesus Christ and what he accomplished for us and in us. We look at that and then we become like he is. We manifest what he is. We hold forth the greatness of that word which is epitomized in the integrity and the accuracy of the revelation addressed to the church. This is what I wanted to share with you on this 31st anniversary tonight of the reason why this ministry is here to bless God's people all over the world wherever they are. And you are that blessing. Remember my little old poem? I've given it so often. You ought to all know it from memory, unless you're first-timers. God has no what? Hands, but our hands with which to give people bread. He has no feet, but our feet with which to move among the almost dead. We say that we are his and he is ours. Deeds are the proof of that, not words. And these are the proving hours. Ladies and gentlemen, it is by divine design that you are a part of this ministry at this time. God wants you to hold forth all the effulgence of the beauty of the divine nature of Christ which is in you that others may again see Christ in you, the hope of glory, that they may walk into the same deliverance that you have walked in. Let's make the 32nd anniversary a hundred thousand times bigger than the 31st. The people are out there. The people are in here. All you need to do is get committed and not have, get a knowledge of that word, a little bit of it anyways, that you can tell them what the Word of God requires for us to say to them. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of teaching your word again tonight to your people here. Thank you for your love and your greatness and your goodness to us. And Father, in your wonderful name, I bless your people tonight. Every person gathered here at International and all of our peoples around the world. Surely thank you, Father, that we have an opportunity to know your word and to hold it forth in this day and time and hour. And I love you for all of your goodness unto us. And thank you for it through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.